so let's focus on a recap of the draft from this perspective. Okay. The second-year quarterbacks. What kind of help did they get through this process? And let's start with the guy who was the first pick in 2021, Jaguars quarterback Trevor Lawrence. Now, they helped him out a lot in free agency. How does he feel, do you think, Chris, about the Jaguars draft class? Well, yeah, he probably doesn't love the the, the Jaguars. Oh, you know what? I'm going to rephrase that. Why wouldn't he love the Jaguars draft class? You know, I've heard people like say, like, oh, the Jaguars – you know, had a bad draft, right? Well, because they should have took Aiden Hutchinson and they took Trevon Walker. I mean, I, like, come on. Like, Tra- Trevon Walker is going to be awesome. You line him out wide and he gets a pass rush like he was intended to do, like we've talked about, he's going to kill people. He's going to, just like Miles Garrett and Perrion Winfrey, all right? He's made to do that. He didn't get to do that in college. People got to, like, make sure that that's a point. It's a real thing, right? So, but the defense, they killed it in the draft. So, yeah, okay, Trevor Lawrence, is, as pertains to the draft, nothing was there. But you had the 20th-ranked defense in football last year. It's going to be better than that this year with this kind of talent on the football field. That's for sure. But, Mike, you said it. That's right. I mean, they're set on offense. They didn't need to do offense in the draft. What, what, what do they got to do? They spent $100 million on offense and free agency. Christian Kirk, Zay Jones. Evan Ingram, superstar talent. You got LaVisca Chenault. Sh- Marvin Jones almost was a 1,000-yard receiver. You got not one good running back, two really good running backs. So, you know, I, again, it wasn't huge for him in the draft, but I think he's sitting pretty with the team got a lot better this offseason. And I, we posted yesterday on the details of the Cam Robinson contract. And, and yeah. look, guys have to sign whatever they're comfortable signing, but to trade in – $16.6 million and a shot at the market next year for the deal that he did. I, I can't help but wonder whether or not the Jaguars squeezed him a little bit. Thinking about the tackle and the draft bit. and all that. Kind thinking, of. About the, thinking about the tackle and the draft. Thinking about the tackle and the draft. And they really weren't thinking about the tackle and the draft. They were thinking that talking about the tackle and the draft gets this guy to take our deal. Because it's a good deal for the Jaguars. And again, it's his business. And he's got $33 million fully guaranteed. But but he had 16.6 in hand and he was one year away from going to the market and who knows what happens on the first day of the market. Those are the guys who get paid the most. There's always some team out there that has the budget that has the cap space and that how many, how many offensive linemen who were tagged twice are ever available. You're going to have an owner somewhere saying, go get that guy. We'll yeah. worry about whether or not it works out later. Right. Go get that guy right. and pay him huge money. And so that know, worked out yeah. well for the Jaguars Definitely. to keep him. Uh, and and then they didn't have to go in that direction, and and they they added Christian Kirk, and they have Travis Etienne Brandon coming Scherf. back, and they still have they still have James Robinson for crying out loud, the guy exactly. that like they 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 work they work overtime to make people forget about him. At least Urban Meyer did between Robinson and Etienne, and with Christian Kirk there and Chenault, like you mentioned, yeah, I think Trevor Lawrence should be pretty happy. Zach Wilson should be pretty happy. Sorry. the second overall pick from last year, Chris, with uh, with Brees Hall. And Garrett Wilson. Now, no help on the offensive line, at least not at the top. They went with uh, uh, Sauce Gardner. Yeah. Sauce Gardner. Right. And Jermaine Johnson with the other two first-round picks. You know, they got they got around to the offensive line in round four with Max Mitchell, but but Wilson's got to be feeling pretty good about what they're doing to get better around him. Has to. I mean, they're 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 putting him in a spot to succeed, a hundred percent. You know, and, and, you know and Mike, I think they look at it and they go, wait, I, I think they, they're offensive line. I think they're looking at it going, when we're healthy, they're going to be good. They signed they sign Lake and Tomlinson, right? You know, they got a, uh, Elijah Vera Tucker last year. Becton, they're expecting to be one of their tackles, and George Fant's going to be the other. So they're going now. Let's, let's get the arsenal going. Wilson, you talked about it. Garrett Wilson wasn't my favorite, but I know he was a lot of people in football's top two, top three receiver for sure. He can go. He's a playmaker. Brees Hall, probably the biggest home run hitting running back in the draft, Mike. You know, there's check downs, awesome in the pass game, anything like that. You're playing Zach Wilson, strong arm downfield. And then to get the tight end from Ohio State, Jeremy Ruckert, Mike. Uh, this was my number one tight end. I think all encompassed when you talk about, you know, physicality in the run game and then Really good route runner. A lot like Freermuth to me from from Pittsburgh last year. So uh, he's got to be happy, Zach Wilson. Yeah, and look, the Jets doing what they have to do to make themselves relevant in an Man. AFC that has Woo. passed them by for a long time, but especially this year. Jets, Jaguars, and Texans catching up with everybody else. The AFC Mac East. Jones. Holy cow. Oh, absolutely. And Mac Jones in his second year as the quarterback of the New England Patriots. He ended up winning the job last year. Cam Newton gets thrown overboard. Here's Mac Jones. 
How did the Patriots help Mac Jones going into year two? Well, they didn't do a whole lot here in this draft. I mean, they got him a fast receiver. They got a lineman, right? Cole Strange. All right. All right. So, like, Tyquan Thornton's definitely a controversial pick. The guy can fly. I wouldn't have expected him in the second round. I wouldn't. You know, I know a lot of people talking about the Cole Strange one. I, to me, the Cole Strange pick wasn't that weird. He was only going to be on the board for another 10 or 12 picks. They needed a lineman that could play. They did that. Tyquan Thornton, on the other hand, Man, there was receivers that I thought were more talented. He is fast as hell, you know, but he doesn't catch the ball or play very physical or break many tackles or do anything like that. But he'll take the top off of defense. I do love Pierre Strong there, Mike. Their their fifth pick of the draft. Three Rockets up his butt running back from South Dakota State. To me, that was one of the steals. But I don't know if this was like a game-changing draft for the Patriots and what they did on offense. It's kind of just rounded out some needs overall. And they got Devontae Parker in free agency, and they're going to ride or die with the team they got right there. And the thing about Pierre Strong, no matter how good he is, we know how the Patriots are with running backs. Exactly. They're completely interchangeable, game plan driven. And, and I'm, I'm surprised they rolled the dice on a second-round receiver because they seem to be an organization that is extremely self-aware. I know. And if they are, right. they're fully aware of their flaws when yeah. it comes to drafting and developing receivers. And if the guy's got issues catching, that's not exactly something that, that comes around when you're 21 or 22. You're either a natural or you're not. And I guess you can improve to your maximum level. And I don't know. I don't know. Again, hey, we talked about Nikhil Harry and what a blunder that was oh, for Bill Belichick with Debo right. Samuel, DK Metcalf, and A.J. Brown still on the board. And is it bad assessment? Is it bad development, bad coaching, not enough patience? They get they get another opportunity. Spotlight's on the second them, round pick. Yeah. High, high, high pick. High pick to use on a receiver, especially nowadays. We'll see what happens there. Well, Justin oh, Fields, yeah. Bears. Say, go ahead. Get something else to say about the Patriots? Well, I was just I'll say, step back and well, let you. Well, all right, thanks, man. I was just gonna say, you know, a lot of people I saw a lot of people too going like, Well, why did they draft a running back? Or you know, like, because this is the modern day NFL. They drafted two of them, right? Yeah, Damian Harris is getting to the point where guess what? It's, you know, he's taking a lot of hits. He's going to want a new contract soon. They're not going to do that. They're already going to replenish. That's the way the NFL is going to go. You're seeing the good teams are now draft like the 49ers. Why do they need a running back? They're awesome at running the ball. The good teams are going to draft the ones that want to run the ball are going to draft one every year now. So they don't get cornered like you've talked about so many times of, wait, we drafted this guy and he was awesome. And now the fan base wants us to pay him and we got to pay him. You know, the smart teams are not going to let that happen. Sorry, Mike. Uh, that's fine. Justin Fields, Chicago Bears. Ah. They spent a lot of time in the offseason tearing it down. What do they do to build it up in the draft for Justin Fields in year two? Not much. I mean, he's one that's got a legitimate gripe. I mean, he really does. I like the third-round pick, Vilas Jones. I do. He's a weapon. You know, he's a slot guy. going to be able to take reverses, speed sweeps, do all that kind of stuff. My jitterbug type of guy in the middle of the field who's got, like, one of those running back bodies that can make people uh, you know, break tackles and do all that. But I, I think – I don't know how you feel. But they're, they're kind of a head-scratcher to me right now. Where I just want to go, new regime. I understand you're trying to get your defense good for your defensive head coach, but you got a big asset and a quarterback there. Let's try to make him look good because that's the way you smooth over the fan base more than anything is make your superstar quarterback look good. Well, and 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 I know that some Bears fans lose their minds when I say this, but I just don't sense that there's a commitment to do everything they can to make Justin Fields look good. Seems and weird. when he struggles this year, if he struggles this year, it's not going to be, well, he doesn't really have the help around him. It's going to be this guy stinks. And that lays the foundation to move on to another quarterback. And this is one of my big concerns when you bring in a quarterback, but your coach and your GM are on the hot seat and then they're Definitely. gone. Definitely. Because then, then the new regime, they're going to say everything they have to say to get the jobs. And once they get the jobs, they're personal evaluation of Justin Fields is going to ooze through. And if they want to move on, if they want their own guy, hey, that's that's the that's the the, 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 the guy that the last regime believed in. And they got fired. This guy this guy's a reminder of Pace and Nagy in their mind. You don't know. You don't know. No, you're right. You don't go. know. But I don't sense they're doing everything they can to make it as good as it can be right now. Maybe it gets better later, but you got to get to later. Right. 2022, the narrative, and we'll see how heavily they defend it. You know, if Justin Fields struggles, are you going to have Ryan Poles and Matt Eberflus 
I mean, what the media is saying, well, don't blame him, blame us, because we put crap around him because we, we've got a longer-term plan here. Um, and uh, it doesn't involve amassing weapons like other teams are doing for their young quarterbacks. We'll get there. Just bear with us. If they're willing to stand up and say that and take the heat off of Justin Fields, so be it. But good luck. If he's not playing well, people are going to assume it's on him, not on anyone else. Yeah, agreed. And it's, yes, it's, it's, that'll get lost in translation. Team, people like us will probably just try to say, hey, there's not much help. He needs help. But the most of the public who's not in the weeds or in the day-to-day -day details, yeah, they're just going to chalk it up to going, oh, he's, he's not working right. It's a bust. Doesn't look like it was a good pick. No doubt. It's, it's, it's going to be interesting to see how that goes well, because they certainly haven't done a whole lot to help them there. You get frustrated. Maybe you get banged up. Maybe you get injured. It's just I, I just I don't feel like there is a vision at which Justin Fields is in the center. I don't. I just don't I don't sense that. All right. Uh <laughs> what did the Texans do to help Davis Mills? I mean, that just presumes that Davis Mills is in the same category as these other guys. I don't think he is. I think he's the placeholder while they continue to build the team around him. Hey, I agree. if he becomes year in and year out starting quarterback, that's great. But I don't feel that that's where it's going. Uh what have they done to help him possibly get to that unlikely title. Did a little bit. I mean, you know, re-signed Brandon Cooks, right? He's definitely their best guy on, on the their offense, so that's good to have. Uh, I, the Kenyon Green pick in the first round, phenomenal player. Could play tackle or guard. Definitely was one of the better best offensive linemen, first-round linemen in the draft. And then, you know, we got John Meachie, the third there from Alabama, who is just, I mean, the, the New england -y slot guy. You know, not like overly physically gifted, but unreal route runner, smart as hell, got great instincts, Mike. I mean, just knows how to play the game. So he'll he'll probably have 80 catches that are a rookie working in the middle of the field. And I love me some Damian Pierce from, from Florida. I mean, thighs and butts for days and a sledgehammer head. To me, that means successful running back. All right. So I like those moves for sure. But I agree with you with the the, the Mills thing, too. I think this is like one of those where he's going to have to keep proving himself to keep the job for one more year. Like if it's not good, they're going to go, okay, yeah, it's not. He's not talent. There's not a talent or a trait about him that you go, oh, I see it in the future. Oh my gosh. Wow. You know, I think he's just, he knows how to play a little bit. He does. He's well schooled that way. He's got everything, but nothing's great. And, and I kind of feel the same way that they're, going to look to replace him unless he's stellar this year yeah and the team just seems to still be in this multi-year i don't right? know where they're going but they've got the picks and let's see if the picks pan out i still don't believe lovey smith is a long-term answer at coach i don't think that's who they wanted Doesn't i still feel think that way hell bent on hiring josh mccown at some point we'll see if it if it that if that ever comes to pass um Last one. How did the 49ers help Trey Lance? Easy answer. They didn't trade or cut <laughs> Jimmy Garoppolo, so they didn't help Trey Lance. Uh, yeah. Right. They didn't trade Debo. They kept him, Mike, so they're good there. And that that you know, that front. Uh, got a good pass rusher there in the first round, definitely. You know, we know they're a team that's kind of set up to begin with. All right, they're extremely talented. They don't need to do a whole lot. They've re-signed some guys in free agency. I love their third round pick. The Davis Price from LSU. Uh, certainly one of the five best running backs in the game. And then the Danny Gray kid from SMU, Mike, kind of just a speed guy, can fly. To me, this would have been like, wait, do, wait, w w the, the Patriots took Tyquan Thornton. This guy, is Danny Gray, is like almost every bit as fast and just a better receiver. But I think he fills a role for their team, especially if Debo uh, and Brandon Ayuk are there. You got to worry about those three guys flying down the field, good running game. Uh, they helped out Trey Lance. But the biggest thing is, yeah, like you've talked about a lot, Jimmy Garoppolo's got to go if they really want to help him and make the guy feel like he's the guy, at least in my opinion. We're going to talk about the coming up. But one last point, when you see those names yeah. there and all the names that have popped up on the graphics we've used this segment, it is a reminder that every year there is a significant influx of new talent. To take it all the way back to an hour plus ago, that's why there's pressure on the established veteran players who are making big money. 
You got to keep performing at a high level to justify what they're paying you because every year, every year, it's the chocolates on the Lucille Ball assembly line. The new players are rolling and rolling and rolling. They're everywhere. And you better you better do your you better do your job. You better be healthy. You better keep playing at a high level because it's just a matter of time before you're the guy that we end up saying, oh, remember that guy? He used to be pretty good. Remember Priest Holmes? He used to be pretty good. Remember, yeah, it's just, it's just random names that will pop up. God, oh, yeah, I remember him. He used to be pretty good. TJ Hushmanzada, oh, yeah, he used to be pretty good. I know. But for the, the name, I probably would have forgotten all about him. I mean, but he was a hell of a player. It's crazy. You know, Mike right. Wallace, Mike Wallace. Oh, not 60 minutes. Mike Wallace, the receiver. Yeah, he was pretty Damn, good for he a was while. good, too. You're right. It's, it's, yeah, and they're it's, just forgotten. It's a shame. You're right. They're legends of the league. Legends. But... Yeah, so many players. You're right. It flips over so quickly. The careers are so short, and we end up only remembering the Hall of Famer type players, really. And it's amazing how many great players kind of get lost in the shuffle. So get what you can while you can and uh, play as hard as you can because it is a ruthless business. There's constantly, constantly new pressure, new competition, new guys flooding the league every year. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.